It is in the matter of Richard Garcia and Mary Lopez. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. We're, we're here separately. Um, Michael Smith works as a private judge. He does private judging and we're reporters. And the California Rules of Court uh, 2.400 say that we have a right to see all the records that he uses in his private judging. And we have emailed him that we are going to come and ask for them. We're entitled to see them during business hours. So when he keeps case files and other records related to private judging, we're going to need to be able to see those records. So where are those kept? Do you know? He runs his own business. I don't know. So what he, he so he rents an office space. He just rents an office yeah. space, and then he puts his card out here, and he puts his address as here, but he's never here. Uh, he pops in once in a while. He pops in once in a while. Yeah, he does most of his business. Uh, so you uh, understand that if there is a court and you're a judge, I can walk into a courthouse. I can see the records. I can look online and I can see how much everybody's making. I can't see that right now. I have no way to see that. So how, how is I'm that accommodated? Sorry, I can't help you, but that was lucky enough to talk to him. So there are no records here at this office? I have no clue. You have no clue? No clue. So you're the person, this is, I just want to be clear, because this is a legal filing related to his appointment order in this case. And it says that it's this address. And he is posting in the courthouse that he is using this address on his appointment orders and everything else. And so that means that I'm entitled to come in and see these records and they're not here. If you have his email address, you can send him. I email. have emailed him. He hasn't he called hasn't me back. So what's the procedure if somebody has a problem here and he needs, how, how are you going to get him that? I'm just going to leave it whenever he comes, he'll pick it up. So he just floats in and out and I have no way to get records or and see neither, him. And neither do I know when he's going to come in or go. Okay. Um, do you leave him messages? Um, I can, if you have his email, you can send him a message saying that. I, have I have done that. He doesn't respond yeah, and I'm he's in violation of the law. What he's doing right now is illegal. And so I am I'm trying sorry, to, I can't help you in that. All I can, do is can you call him? him? Can you call him? No, I cannot call him. You don't have a phone number I to call him? I don't call in. Um, I just leave messages for him. I mean, I leave things. Let me see. Every, all his mail is there. So, so he, if he comes on the weekend, he'll collect it. Oh, so if he pops in on the weekend, he'll collect his mail. Mm -hmm. And so he used to be on the Alameda, and he used to conduct private judge hearings there. Does he not conduct them here I now? I have no clue, like I said. Okay. All right, thank you. I'd like to get copies. What is your name? My name is Susan Bassey. Can you leave me your I don't card? have a card on me. I'd be happy to give you my information. If you can write it here. Uh, uh, I have a broken hand. Cops broke it in the file room while I was researching Michael Smith's cases. So um, I can tell you my information. He knows it too. You can just give him my name. He'll know it. I give it to him every time I email him. You might just let him know that we were here. What that, are you taking all these cards for? Why am I taking them? Because this is essentially a courthouse. And I want to know what lawyers are in this because I'm willing to bet that at no point did Mr. Smith disclose that he has relationships with all of these attorneys and he's appearing in reciprocal private judging cases with all of them and he's making a lot of money and he recently converted a cryptocurrency account for his fees and he has a paralegal. So where does Margie Russo work? Does she work here? She probably comes in once in a way. Margie Russo comes in once in a while? Once in a way, yeah. So when Margie Russo directed somebody and prepared paperwork related to DVRO, would Margie Russo have been here I, when she gave it? I'm sorry, I cannot tell you anything because I don't know. Okay, I appreciate right. it. Thank you very much. Snacks, they have snacks. Sure. Maybe just call the owner of the building and tell him what you're doing. That'd be great. There's the big conference room. Oh, look, they can write exhibits up there. Hi there. Please leave.
Uh, this is a public courthouse by notice. Are Please you leave. telling me to leave? Yes. What is your name? Please leave. I need your name. Please leave. I need to know. Please leave. This is a public courthouse. Please leave. Michael Smith is please a private leave. judge. What is your name? Please leave. Would you call 911? Yes, please do. Yes. Please do. I'll wait for the police. Please, please I, I have court documents. Please go outside. That's fine. I'll wait right here. Oh, closing the courthouse. The paid courthouse. We're waiting for the police now, I guess. Here we go. Okay, so when I was at the courthouse on June 3rd, I ran into a woman who was telling me that she was in private judging. And she said she had seen my videos, but she was excited because she knew that I'd been talking about these private judges not being on a list. And so she and I went and we checked and her private judge and her case were on the list. So we thought that everything was gonna be good because we had transparency with that. So then I got her appointment order for Judge Michael Smith. And in this appointment order, what happens is two people agree that they can use a private attorney to be their judge. They agreed to pay $600 an hour to him. And when he signed that he took his oath and said that he would be a judge, he would follow the constitution and all the laws, which he signed at this address, located right here. That made this become a public courthouse. So the law says that we're entitled to get into that courthouse and we're entitled to see the records related to this case. And in this case, I saw in the public file that there were filings that he was paying himself out of cryptocurrency. He literally made them cash in cryptocurrency account. He took the woman who was on a fee waiver, meaning she was indigent, she had lost her attorney and he cashed in a cryptocurrency account to pay his fees, tackling, leaving them with the tax liability for that. So this right here, when he took his oath, he followed, he signed that he would swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States and all laws, state and federal rules. That includes giving me access to records in that case and he didn't do it. And just now you can see what happened when at two o'clock, on a Monday afternoon, we tried to access this building. I had also done a public records request, which was denied. And we also noticed that on this appointment order that a Judge Adams signed the appointment order because when two parties agree that an attorney can be privately paid to be a judge, you need a public elected judge to sign off. And we started to notice there is this Judge Adams signing off on these orders for cases that are not before him. This case was assigned to Judge Cindy Hendrickson, but Judge Adams signed the order and he signed it a month before Michael Smith agreed to do everything. So you tell me in the public court file why there is a private judge getting paid $600 an hour with offices I can't access, no records that the law says I can access, and he signs his order in April of 2021 and a public court judge approves the order a month earlier. There are all kinds of irregularities. There are issues with Michael Smith reportedly covering up cash and gold coin issues with other attorneys. And what we're finding is, is that Silicon Valley people who are very wealthy can hire an attorney to play judge and get them out of committing crimes. That's, that's what it's starting to appear like. And it also appears they're not noticing the hearings that they're conducting. There's no public notice of that. So I can't get the transcript. I can't listen to the hearing. And the attorneys tell you that this will be private. The law says it's not private. And so that's where we are right now. We've done, we have done everything to get access. And it appears that Silicon Valley over the last 10 years has privatized the family courts. You, cause I need to confirm that I'm not making this up. Okay. Absolutely. So who told you to go to Michael Smith? Okay. So the attorneys uh, told to go to Michael Smith. They, uh, Nicole, F Nicole Myers, Nicole Myers. And who was the, the attorney of, uh, my ex-husband. Uh, and I also I was represented by, uh, James Han. Uh, so the attorneys, Nicole Myers, she has about 13, uh, open cases with uh, Judge Michael Smith. 
and uh, it was attached with the document of called conflicts of interest. Uh, so Nicole Myers had a You lot. have that? You got that? Oh yes, of course. I got this from Michael Smith, the document that uh, says possible conflict of interest. Uh, my attorney did not have or maybe had in the past one case. I need you to send me that document. Oh, of course, of course. Um, so, yeah. so you know in most cases the attorneys don't do that. And no judge, no attorney should be taking a case where they have hundreds or 13 cases with one attorney and none with the other. Uh, okay. With Han, so, did Michael Smith have any? Um, maybe in the past, but it was not, uh, not, not an issue. Did I you think. ever call any of the people on Michael Smith's conflict list? Uh, no. Okay, you give me that list because I'm betting he didn't put it in the court file because none of his cases were listed and I'm gonna call those people. It looks, uh, so I'm a mother of three children. I'm working in technology. Um, I am a mother, a wife, a person, and I was kicked out of my house a year ago, uh, just abruptly, and my kids were taken for uh, no apparent reason. So. Uh, Nicole Myers, uh, she said, okay, uh, please sign this agreement. It was like 50-50 custody and financials. If you don't sign- So she tied custody to you signing away for financials that would have been sure. impairing your financial interests. It was less than it, it half. Was involved, uh, it was involved uh, financial. So, uh, and then she, the, I got this email on Friday and she said, okay, you need to respond to me on Monday. It was no negotiation. And then my attorney, uh, uh, my attorney, I tried to negotiate. I say, I, I responded right away the same day. And I said, okay, let's negotiate. The custody is not a problem, but the financial part, let's split and negotiate, right? But, but then I got restraining order. I was with the children for three weeks. Everything is great. Um, and then I was kicked out of the house. Luckily, after eight weeks, I was let back. Uh, the kids are with me. 50-50 and about 100 people helped me. The community stood by me because I'm not only the mother, I'm volunteer in the community. So the teachers, the, the religious community, they so all So they me. knew what was happening? Uh, no, nobody knew. But if 100 people stood by you, they had to know. Uh, the, the, because I volunteer in the community. But if you like had not been volunteering in the community, hello, Mr. Stadlin, how hello. are you? Wonderful, how, how are much you? are you billing people in family court these days? Public court judges are elected or appointed to the bench. We get to know how much they make, they're not allowed to accept bribes to do their work, and we get to know about their hearings and their dockets. But lately we've been finding these judges are delegating their jobs to private divorce attorneys who are being paid very large amounts of money to do the work of a public court judge. And when we discovered that private attorney Michael Smith was getting domestic violence restraining order cases in front of him, we knew that there was probably something going on that we needed to investigate. Because domestic violence cases add a great deal of money to a divorce case, it can also see people removed from their homes and stripped of custody of their children. So when you got kicked out of your house yes. for eight weeks, what were your children told? Oh, uh, that they were lied, that mommy what? did something wrong, probably. Okay. And uh, yes. how old are your children? And as I listened to that mother, I couldn't help but think about little Emily McCracken Dobson, whose father was incredibly wealthy, and he convinced the mother to go into private judging before Orange County's David Weinberg. We checked Mr. Weinberg's cases, and they were not on the docket or publicly noticed. And yet he was paid a great deal of money to strip a mother of custody of her daughter, whom she hasn't seen in four years. Today is Emily's birthday. She turns 18, and I often wonder what she will think about our modern family courts now that she's an adult. People are getting mad about this kind of issue. So you guys are doing your job. I think a lot of people don't understand what that job is, and I want to make sure that they do. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. What is your name? Uh, Officer Pang. Pang and badge number? 12263. Okay, and I'll get an incident report. Yeah. Just trying to teach people how to do this because there's a lot of private judging cases. Okay? Thank you. And you guys are going to be on my YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, here's the event number. Perfect. Right there. That's my name. Great. Thank you. I got it.